Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome to what's going to be a bit of a special video as we're going to look back at the last two years of development on the multiplayer pirate game I've been working on. In order to start at the very beginning, we have to go all the way back to January 5th, 2019. I've dreamt of building some sort of multiplayer game involving trade and piracy for years and years and while I had previously done some experimenting with shaders, terrain generation and water simulation, until that day it was all still an idea that I thought I'd maybe bring to life eventually someday far in the distant future. Speaking of the idea, I should probably address something that you may have noticed if you've watched any of my recent devlogs, which is that the game in its present state resembles Sea of Thieves quite a bit, both in the way it looks and in how several of the core mechanics work. I've been getting a few comments on every video lately saying that it looks like a Sea of Thieves clone, and while they're not exactly wrong, I got a little bit tired of explaining myself again and again and I may or may not have pinned one of the comments and posted an extraordinarily kind reply. Sea of Thieves is an awesome game, I play it on a regular basis, and I have no intention of competing with Rare, even if that was in some way possible for me as a solo dev. And while the project does currently look similar to Sea of Thieves, particularly that ship, I'll be changing it up soon and there's some very different systems that I want to build out which will differentiate the game quite a bit. Anyways, back in January of 2019, I didn't have a YouTube channel, but I did have a blog, so I started a series where I'd post updates every two weeks explaining what I had been working on. Looking back, I'm not sure that anyone ever really read these posts, and although reading them now makes me cringe quite a bit, they helped keep me accountable and they're the main reason I'm able to properly sum up what I worked on for this video. I mean just look at this, if you somehow did end up reading one of these, I would assume you were there to hear about progress, not to find out that I had done nothing on a given day because I had a bunch of homework, or spent my time playing Anno 1503 instead. So, one day after officially starting this project, I published the first post to introduce it to the world. Back then I still had my server application set up as a console app, meaning I didn't have access to any of Unity's handy features like, you know, physics, so initially I started working on my own physics and collision systems. That was a big mistake. The scope for this project was, and still is, already huge, even without building my own physics system, and I'm very relieved that my past self came to his senses as quickly as he did. During the first two weeks I worked on a custom console log formatter which I was quite proud of at the time, and I soon came across Beppu Physics, which is a physics library that can be run within a console application. A few days later I added the first iteration of water to the multiplayer project, and ensured that the waves were synchronized. This was important as ships are affected by waves, so all players need to see the same big waves in the same positions. Since my water is just based on a mathematical formula, I managed to get that working by regularly sending the wave offset to clients which they can then use to reconstruct the water properly. I started February off by adding the first iteration of buoyancy physics. My idea was to sample several points around the ship and check how far underwater they were. Using those depth values I'd be able to apply an appropriate upwards force to the boat to keep it floating, and that's actually still how I do it to this day. However, one issue was that I had no way of making sure those points around the ship actually rotated with it. Since my server wasn't in Unity, I couldn't just make the points child objects of the ship and have it taken care of for me. I briefly considered moving my server into Unity at that time, and looking back I really wish I had gone through with it, but for some reason I was really set on the idea of keeping the server as a console app, so I took it upon myself to build my own game object and component systems. That was something I continuously worked on over the months, and the amount of time I could have saved by just sticking the server into a Unity project is absolutely mind boggling. Luckily it wasn't 100% wasted time because I think I did learn a lot through that process. Anyways, apparently one of my Fridays was very busy, and by mid-February I had somewhat working buoyancy in place. I wish I had some clips from back then to show you guys, but unfortunately the computer I had at the time wasn't capable of screen recording at a stable frame rate, so screenshots are all that remain from the early days of this project. I started getting tired of looking at cubes floating in the water, so I got to work on a proper model for the ship. In early March I finished the ship model for the time being, and considering that I had done very little modeling by that point, I was pretty proud of how it turned out, even though it was still missing cannons among other things. I also spent some time tweaking the water's colors, and that was the first time I thought that the project actually looked kind of nice. I then took care of a bunch of rather boring stuff like adding colliders to the ship and improving the buoyancy code to give more realistic results. The second half of March is when I really took a deep dive into shader programming, and my eyes were open to the immense power that comes with understanding shaders. You can do so much cool stuff with them, and even the bugs tend to be very entertaining to look at. I went through the entire rendering series on Catlight Coding's site, which was super helpful. 
They're a few years old at this point, but I'll leave a link in the description anyways. Since my old shaders weren't supported on mobile or Mac, I did a complete overhaul with the help of that series, and after addressing some things that I overlooked, I ended up with the ship looking like this. Then in April, I overhauled the water shader, at which point things looked like this. Unfortunately, I had some issues getting shadows to appear on the water because the water was a transparent object. I also modeled some cannons, although I didn't get around to making those functional until May. May was filled with struggling with the physics library I was using. Beppu physics was pretty cool, but unfortunately the lack of resources made using it really tough. Every time I wanted to add something new, I'd have to crawl through a bunch of code in the demos to figure out how I could do it, and often I'd also need to ask for help on the forums, which made progress really slow. I still wish I had just switched to a Unity server at that point, but sadly I didn't. Hindsight is 2020, I guess. Now, in June is when things started getting more interesting for me as the developer, because I added the necessary menus and functionality to allow you as a player to create a ship or to join someone else's. With that in place, I started messing around with some of my friends who were in my programming class at school, and we'd all pile onto a ship and then do dumb stuff like crank up the wave height to 300. It probably wasn't the most productive thing to be doing, but it was hilarious and definitely helped motivate me to add new mechanics that we could play with. I also added some terrain generation that produced what sort of looked like islands, but compared to the island generation I have now, it was pretty bad. On the 3rd of July, I made players float in the water, and then progress came to a screeching halt. Since I had graduated high school just a couple weeks before that, I felt an immense amount of pressure to figure out what I was going to do with my life, and I honestly wasn't really sure. I was enjoying working on this project, but obviously that wasn't bringing in any money, and I started feeling guilty about spending all my time working on a game that wouldn't be done for a long time, while having no idea how I was going to support myself down the road. It's not like my parents kicked me out or anything, but they did have the very reasonable expectation that I at least have some kind of plan for the future. I knew I didn't want to go to university, and that's a subject that I could make a whole other video about, but it essentially boiled down to the fact that I felt like I could personally do and learn more on my own in four years, than if I spent that time plus a whole lot of money on more schooling. Anyways, I went nearly seven weeks without touching the project even once. That brings us to the end of August, when I finally returned after coming across a thread on the Unity forums talking about shadows on transparent objects, and eventually I ended up with what was honestly a disgusting workaround. While I'm hesitant to even call it a solution, it at least got me back into working on the project. As September rolled around, I started experimenting with using shaders to cut holes in the water plane because I wanted to get rid of the water inside the boat. After a few days, I had something that worked pretty well, and it's still what I'm using today, however I'll need to make some modifications at some point because it doesn't handle non-ship parts very well. If a player walks below deck, you can see the water being rendered in front of them, which looks quite strange to say the least. This is where my blog post devlogs end, because my computer ended up breaking just a few days after removing the water inside ships. I saw this as an opportunity to get an upgrade so that I could run my project at more than 20 FPS, and so that I'd be able to record my screen. I had been thinking about starting a YouTube channel for quite some time by that point, and when the parts for my new PC arrived, having a computer that wasn't capable of recording or editing videos was no longer an excuse I could use to talk myself out of it. I started making devlogs and multiplayer tutorials, which means from this point on I actually have old footage I can show you guys. Of course, you can also go check out the old videos for yourself, but I'm honestly not sure how they managed to get as many views as they did, because compared to my videos now, they're pretty bad and not particularly interesting, especially if you don't know much about programming. Anyways, the first video devlog I posted was about adding UDP support to my multiplayer solution, which is basically a faster way for my clients to communicate with the server. Like I said, boring. I also finally spent some time smoothing out the movement of dynamic objects like the players and ships, as they were previously just being teleported around really quickly. In November I started diving deeper into the crazy things that developers implement into multiplayer games in order to hide latency. Things like server rollback, which basically makes the server rewind time in order to process inputs with the correct game state, and client prediction, which essentially has the player predict his own movement in order to hide input lag. It gets really complicated and confusing, and it's certainly not particularly interesting unless you're actively working on a multiplayer game of your own, so I won't go into any more detail than that, but I spent a lot of time trying to get these kinds of systems working. Around that time, I also made ships sink when they get hit by cannonballs, I added a day-night cycle, and I changed up my wave formula. Instead of using sine waves, I started using Gerstner waves, which produce much more realistic looking water, 
and that was a huge improvement. I didn't do nearly as much in December of 2019. I made the sails adjustable and added some calculations for how much speed the ship gets based on the angle of the sail compared to the wind direction, but that was kind of it, which brings us to the end of the first year of development. To start off 2020, I made it possible to drop the ship's anchor, and while doing that, I was once again reminded of how tedious it was to crawl through a bunch of physics code to figure out how to make it work, but I still didn't move my server to Unity. I also did some more polishing on how clients smoothly handled moving objects, but I'll spare you the technical details. In February, I switched the client project over to the Universal Render Pipeline, which meant I had to rewrite all of my shaders, but I'm glad I did. I definitely prefer URP over the built-in render pipeline. Along with that, I added some post-processing and wrote a custom procedural skybox shader, which once again helped improve the look of the project. March was filled with quite a lot of visually uninteresting stuff, like building a master server to handle incoming client connections, and setting up a launcher to make distributing updates easier for whenever I would finally start playtesting with friends. Work on the game's launcher continued into April, and that's when I finally, finally made the best decision I've made when it comes to this project. I moved the server into Unity. While this meant I had to rebuild quite a few systems so that they would work with Unity's physics, it was so, so, so worth the time. What pushed me over the edge was the realization that if I wanted to make player movement feel responsive, I would need to properly implement client prediction, and that would be virtually impossible while using two different physics engines on the client and server. If there's one thing I wish I could change about the development of this project, it's me waiting so unbelievably long to switch to a Unity server. The amount of time and frustration that doing this sooner would have saved me is absolutely mind-blowing, but unfortunately I can't rewind time the way my server can. By the end of the month, I had converted pretty much all the game mechanics to work in Unity, and I then went to work on revamping island generation. This was a massive improvement over the old terrain generation, as the old islands had no beaches, and there was a huge amount of seabed being generated which simply didn't need to be there. I spent most of May working on client prediction, and I'll once again spare you the boring details. It worked great on land, but when you would step onto a ship, the prediction would be incorrect a lot due to the ship also being a moving object, and this caused a lot of jittering, which is why I eventually ended up disabling the prediction code again. I also added some really ugly stars to the skybox, and I revamped the buoyancy code again. After that I got to work on modeling a flintlock and making it functional, and the devlog on that was the first one to really get a boost from the algorithm, hitting over 5000 views in the first week, which was really encouraging. In June, I added underwater fog so that you couldn't see as well underwater as you could above the water, and I made it possible for players to drown. Then I added the first palm trees and got those generating on islands, which were soon followed by small rocks. I also made the water move with the player to make it endless, as you could previously just sail off the edge of the ocean into open space, which didn't seem quite right. July brought the addition of swimming mechanics, and a player model that could haunt your dreams. Like I mentioned earlier, this is also when I removed the client prediction because I was sick of the jittering you'd experience when standing on boats and I was honestly just tired of dealing with complex multiplayer stuff since it was preventing me from actually adding content and gameplay mechanics. I ended the month by finally making ship damage visible, even if it was just by slapping a texture onto the ship where the hole was. It's not an artistic masterpiece, and I'll be replacing it in the future, but it's certainly much better than an invisible hole. August of 2020 is when I added what is probably still my favorite mechanic, namely grappling hooks. I had a ton of fun playing around with this in my test project before implementing it into the game, and I can't wait to use it to board other people's ships when I get some bigger playtests going. I also improved the UI and did quite a bit of bug fixing. Now, at this point ranged combat was in place, but there was still no melee combat of any kind, so it was time to add a sword. This is when it started feeling like things were beginning to come together, because seriously, what kind of pirate game doesn't have swords? I didn't get around to implementing the blocking mechanic until October, which is also when I made it possible to break trees and rocks to get resources. I've yet to make it possible to use these resources for anything besides repairing holes in your ship, but I'm looking forward to the day when I can fortify an island or deck out my ship with way too many cannons. I also fixed some code that was messing up the colors of the entire project, I added models for an axe and a pickaxe, and I got rid of the disgusting stars and replaced them with what I'd say looks infinitely better. I went on to rewrite and clean up a lot of my code, as I wanted to make sure I keep things readable and reusable. That's pretty important with projects of this scale, because coming back to an ugly mess that you wrote 6 months ago, and have entirely forgotten how it works, is an absolute nightmare. 
By the end of November, I had also added a basic inventory system to manage items. I started December off by switching the project over to my new and improved multiplayer solution that I had been working on for the past couple months, and then I flattened the waves around islands. That was honestly so long overdue, and it was another massive improvement in terms of visuals. I mean just look at how ugly it was before with the waves going straight through the island. I also finally made it possible to repair the holes in your ship, which meant that your ship getting shot just once no longer guaranteed that you'd sink. And that brings us to the end of the first two years of development. Throughout January, I did a lot of work on my multiplayer solution, but the most exciting part was that I finally sent the project to a friend and we played around with it. That was a ton of fun as well as a big motivation booster, but I won't go into too much detail as I have devlogs covering all of that, and unlike my older videos, I'm comfortable saying that these are actually interesting to watch. From here, I really want to start fleshing out the gameplay and implement some mechanics to differentiate the project from Sea of Thieves. Along with that, I definitely need to start working on animations and giving the player feedback for what's happening, particularly in combat situations, as currently there's exactly zero indication as to whether or not you hit someone with your sword or if they blocked it, or if you just missed entirely because you're bad. I also need to get some sound effects going, because while it may not be noticeable in devlogs, the game is completely silent in its current state, and audio makes a world of difference for how games feel. The next devlog should be an exciting one, but I won't spoil anything just yet. I'll probably be streaming on a few days over the coming weeks, so if you're interested in that, make sure you either join the Discord server or hit the notification bell. While you're at it, don't forget to obliterate the like button, and let me know in the comments if you made it this far into the video. With that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.